Hello, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us today for our monthly installment of the TBC Power Hour. This is the uh, September 2019 edition, and we'll be talking about IFC workflows between TBC and Trimble Access. I am your uh, very brief guest host, Joe Blecka. I uh, work for Trimble here in Westminster, Colorado. The man who's going to be taking you home the rest of the way will be Kevin Kinahan. Kevin, do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? Hi, everyone. How are you keeping? So I'm the Geospatial Technical Sales Support for Corec Ireland. Um, so I'll be just running through the brief IFC into TBC and into Trimble Access. And we've got a special guest here now. Well, not uh, a guest is not the right word. A future fixture. Um, we have a new um, product manager for TBC, Jeff Ryan, who is joining us today. Hey, everyone. I'm Jeff. Um, I'm the new TBC product manager here in Westminster, Colorado. Um, I have a, a background in mapping using GIS, CAD, and uh, mostly in land surveying. Um, I've been using Trimble products for a long time, and I'm really excited to join the team and consistently strive to make TBC a, the outstanding product it is. Um, outside of work, just enjoy everything Colorado has to offer. Um, hiking, skiing, camping, doing all the, that good stuff. So nice to join the team. How many 14ers have you completed so far? Uh, not so many. <laughs> so that's a just, thing, the picture there, he's got to sign up. Um, that's a thing in Colorado. So there are several uh, mountain peaks over 14,000 feet of elevation above sea level. Yeah, nowhere close to the 52, I believe. 52. Thanks. We're excited to have uh, Jeff take over as TBC product manager, and he'll be hosting these uh, power hours here going forward. Okay, ahead, so I, I'll take it over here. And just to go back one, just if you're thinking I'm super small, that is a giant TC7 behind me <laughs> at, at Intergeo. Uh, just in case you're thinking I'm super tiny. <laughs> okay. So what I do is just a brief introduction of myself. So literally my background. So uh, fully qualified civil engineer for nearly 14 years now. Uh, I started out doing structural steel analysis design down in Southern Ireland, County Kerry. And from there, I started going into land survey, into the roads division. From there, I started going into setting out engineer, started on the rail, then then went into rivers doing hydrology. And from there, I went on to machine control systems, working on all the Trimble machine control. And at the moment, I work uh, currently for Corec Group. So we're based in the UK and Ireland. And if you're wondering from my accent, yes, I am based in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> so we have an office here based in Dublin, and we have one in Liverpool and in Huntington in the UK. So I used to be the applications engineer for Trimble Construction Division. And then I got moved to technical sales support for the geospatial side. So I've taken over all the digital construction data and all the geospatial data within Corec. I'm a mass, massive Monster Rugby fan, as you can see there on the right. So I'm actually watching World Cup at the minute, waiting for Ireland to lift that Webb Ellis uh, Cup this year. And I'm from Tipperary Originals. So lucky enough, we won the hurling here on the right this year. So I had to actually throw it into the presentation. So delighted about <laughs> that. So that's literally my quick background. So I dabbled in a, a load of bit of data throughout the years, my experience, okay? So what we're here for today, the agenda. So brief introduction. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop into IFC origins, where they actually come from. I'm gonna do a just quick little Tecla example where the origin points are, what we can do in the software, and really what questions we should be asking when we get this data. Secondly, I then I'll pop into the TBC, and I'll be doing important IFC straight into TBC. It'll be geo reference in TBC, and I'll work with a couple of samples data within TBC to work off the model. And then from there, I'll pop into Trimble Access and show a couple of features in Trimble Access. And then if we have time, uh, we'll have a questions and answer session at the end. Okay. So first yeah, off, if, you, if anybody does have any questions, 
uh, throughout the presentation, please type them into the chat. Um, we will get to them as time allows, as Kevin said. Um, they are logged and we've got your email address associated with them. So uh, we will reach out to you if we are unable to answer your question uh, during the session here today. Thanks, Joe. So what I'll do is the data that we're working with today, we're working with BIM IFC data from Felix O'Hare and they're based up in Northern Ireland. So we work closely with them doing the South Regional College up in County Armagh. So it was a 35 million sterling project, uh, BIM level two, and the available models with the models which I'll be working with today in TBC is the steel and the architectural, the outer envelope model, both in IFC. And the uh, senior engineer on that site is great fellow, Wayne Nolan. So we work closely with Wayne there. As you can see him there on the bottom left holding his TSC7. He also has Ken I there with an RTS in the middle and also on the bottom right. You're wondering why we're hugging each other is because that was one of the worst days in Ireland. There was storm, wind and rain. And uh, I swear we were the only three left guys on the site. The site was closed down and we were lucky to be live and have the SX10 still set beside us. So we were uh, delighted to get all the data done that day. So that was actually a great day on site. So that's the data I'll be working with today in TBC. So the wind and rain is an oddity in Ireland. Uh, I was waiting for that question. Yes, uh, we should. We're well able for the rain, all right. But when the sheet, the steel sheet, and starts peeling off the side of the structure, <laughs> then you get worried. So uh, we're holding on for dear life. But yeah, we're well used to the rain anyway. So that was a good day. So we got all our scanning done and all the steel done. So we scanned everything, all the portal frame with the S610, and it looked amazing. So I was delighted with that. Uh, still standing after the end of the day. So that was good. So. But no further ado, I'll pop into Tecla Structures. So what I'm going to do is just show you what I did with the IFC the minute I got it. So the minute I got that IFC, what I did with Tecla, why I popped into Tecla. So usually with Tecla, I'd export out the IFC again, but I'll show you what I'll do in uh, Tecla if you did have Tecla. And then in there, you can pop into Trimble Connect if you want and send the IFC into Trimble Connect. So I just want to say thanks to Craig Johnson as well from Trimble in Techland UK, he's a great guy and he helps us out a lot. So he's the steel guy and because I have a steel background, I intend to go to Craig a lot. So so he's a great guy. So from there, what I do is I'll pop straight into Tecla. So pop in here. So you'll see in here, this is just uh, Tecla structures. So you'll notice there on the right hand side there, if I just move my panel here, there's a reference model icon there. So all that is, is when I click on that, I can literally go in and add a model, right? So I literally click in there and I browse my model. So we we'll say the steel model. And usually when I ask what the model is, if it's steel, my first question is, did it come for Tecla? Because one, I'm like, yeah, great. I can actually work with this. That's a Trimble product, but it can be from anything. So if it's come any other model I see, you can still bring it in there and look at it in here. So because this was done in Tech Lab, I click, 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 click in the model and then the model appears in here. So here in the 3D view, you can see that when you actually bring in the model, it actually works to the this local coordinates. So you can see it's local by just even looking at it because the work plane, the geometry of the model, it's all straight lines, horizontal, vertical, straight lines. You know when you want to go to the real world, there's going to be a bit of a twist in it. So literally you want to reference. So you know straight away that the, we say the base point where the model was actually generated was a zero, zero base point. Uh, same thing in, uh, we we'll say, if you're using uh, Revit, we we'll say it'll still be zero, zero. Okay, so when you actually click in here, so this is just IFC, you know notice that there's a couple extra icons in here as well. So it's a IFC conversion. I can actually go into manage data here in my Tecla. And because I know this was uh, originally generated in Tecla, I can convert that IFC into a Tecla model. So what it is, is when you open up Tecla, the environment, it asks you what environment you're using. For this environment, I'm using the UK environment. And once you've that environment selected and you convert from IFC from the Tecla engine, it'll actually go and sift through all the components from that environment and actually bring them in. So all the columns and all the data, you can see here is a bland IFC, so it's all grays. When you actually populate and convert the IFC, it'll go and find all what the components are, so for the pads, the columns and all that. So if I just pop in here for a sec, pop into the steel model here, you can see here it's model origin and you can see where the offset is. So if you say the offset is zero, zero, and zero. So if I went in and picked somewhere, so I say if I pick this pad here, it'll tell me there 
the offset is zero on zero, but I do have an elevation. Okay, so that would be my origin point. So with Tecla, if I wanted to reference this, I can actually give it an origin point, but I need to know that rotation. So literally I need to go export and have a fixed point and a rotation point. So that's what I usually do when I pop into Tecla. I actually go in, create points there, see where it is, and then I can see, can I reference it? So I could reference from there. So that's just a sample of what the Tecla is. So you could go into Revit, do the same thing, have a quick look at it, just literally go up into the menu then, into export, and then literally export it as an IFC. If you really want to also, you can literally go to connect, and then you can actually download your IFC or import it as true from a connect into TBC. Or if you really want to, you can go into SketchUp as SKP as well, okay? So that was just a quick little brief overview there in Tech Lab. If you're okay with that, I just pop back down and go into the presentation again. Okay. So that was the demo there. So what we'll be actually doing now in uh, TBC. So what I'll do is from scratch, I'll just bring in straight in the IFC. Uh, just drag and drop straight into TBC. I'll coordinate the model. And what I do is I just go a couple of features, uh, what you can do with that model in TBC. So maybe create a couple of surfaces and all that. And then what I'll do is export it out to IFC and then straight into Trimble Access. So we'll pop into TBC. So for here, I literally loaded TBC as normal and I'm gonna create a blank template. So on my quick access toolbar, just create a quick blank template. Loads my project settings. And if you're like me, you probably have a 50 million unnamed projects. I don't know you're the same job, but sometimes you don't have the time. You're lobbing data, you straight out. So for this, I'll actually create a name and we call it TVC Power IFC. And this is TVC version 510, the, the latest release yeah. of uh, TVC. Okay, from there, I'll pop into the power hour here, and you can see I have IFC models. And this is my uh, IFC, so you can see just the file size is 75 megabytes. So I'll literally, I'm going to catch that, drop it in, and literally drop it straight into the middle of the screen. From here, what it does, it reads the IFC file, and once it reads the IFC file, it goes into the geometry. So it breaks it up into the elements and the components within the IFC, and from there, it checks the properties. So it changed into Trimble properties to load IFC. So why I wanted to show you this is literally the speed wise. So how long would be, question is always is, of a huge model, 100 megabytes, 150, 200, 300, how long will it take? So that's why I didn't want to preset and ready. I wanted to show you actually how it loads in the model straight away. And this is just one model. So I can throw in another model on top of this later, just to show you, okay? so. This is what the model looks like. Same type, uh, you know, it's not reference, it's zero, zero as usual. So you see the zero, zero line on the bottom of the slab. So what I do is just flick into 3D. So you can see it in here. So that's the model, how it looks like. So I just go into the split screen. You can see here that this is plan view and 3D view. If I go into my imported files here, there was my uh, IFC model. From there, I can load up, and it gives me the elements there. Okay, so there's all the actual physical elements, the steel sizes. So you can see that the environment that was done was using the UK environment. So like, for example, here, the column is C column. It's a box section. So 274, uh, 254 by 254, okay? And then you have IFC beams. So all the properties is broken up into beam sections, slabs, columns, and all that, okay? So now what we want to do is put this in the real world, okay? So thanks to Wayne there, he gave me two coordinates. So what I'll do is hop into my CSV, and he gave me two known coordinates on the site, so my site origin. So I'll literally drag that in as well. Pop that into TBC. Loads up, it's just standard CSV. And then I'm just gonna put in point east ignoring elevation unknown, and then import. And then it gives me a coordinate system. And when I'm looking at that straight away, I know it's Irish grade in Northern Ireland, okay? So I just press okay. And there she is up there at the very top. So point one and two. 
So what I'll do is I'll highlight them and my properties on my left uh, is default to points properties. So what I can do is I click on that and just a quick tip, I hit the space bar because time is of essence and we need to go to site. It automatically highlights, opens the layer and highlights the name so I can type it in. So if I go on site origin, hit close. And then, then in my view filter manager, I have in there my layers. So in there I have my site origin, okay? So I'm just gonna turn them off. I'll double click the mouse wheel just for zoom extents. So there it is. So now I'm gonna to start to move it, okay? So I go into CAD. So in CAD, there's the edit command here in this little section here. And this is where we can move things, rotate things, transform things. So I'm gonna do it one by one. So what I'll do is do a move separate and then I'll do a rotate separate. And I'll show you another way how to do it really quick as well, okay? So what I'll do is do a move. So I'll pop in there, make sure I'm not selected. And what I do is I don't select anything yet. I just click where do I wanna go and where do I wanna go from, okay? So I go into from. I just move my model, so as Wayne said, it's the bottom left of the slab, slab. so there it was, zero, zero, and that's what it clicked, zero, zero, and where do I wanna go to? And it's point one, okay? So if I hit point one, just type it in and tab it, it automatically finds that from the site origin, so it's point one, and then it's a 3D move. I could 3D move, but I know from the tech lab, or from here, that it's in actually a 3D already, so the top of slab, what from literally the Tekla model was 35.725. From there, I literally click in there and say what objects I want to move. I highlight the whole screen. So I'm going to highlight the whole model here. It highlights an orange. And from there, I hit apply. And then it moves off from there to the origin point. So what I'm going to do is double click again. It loads zoom extents. And then what I'll do is I'll just turn back on my layer for site origin. And you can see now I have point one and two. So I know this is my rotation. So now I have to rotate that to the real world. So I know the point one is right, so I need to rotate it. So now I can go into rotate. Okay, same thing again. I want to rotate it, but now I need to know what that angle is. Okay, so I need to know this is the point I have to rotate. So I have to rotate clockwise with my hinge point as one and end up with point two for the underside of the right slab. So what I do is I go into home and I can go into measure distances and drop down and you can go into measure angle. Even if you click on measure distance at the top, TBC already has preset the angles as well there. So you can actually click in the angle and it says start point. So my start point is gonna be here. So I have a snap on there, top. Then I'm gonna to go to my pivot point, which is point one. And then my end point is point two. And it says there it's uh, 76 degrees, 11 minutes, 26 seconds. So because you're a bit lazy, I can highlight this. Instead of me having to write that down, I can literally highlight it. And I'm just gonna hit Control C to copy it. Close that, because I don't need that anymore. And I go into my rotate. And it says, what do I wanna rotate around? So I click in there, hit point one, go into my angle, Control V, and there's my angle and then I'll go in and select the IFC. Okay, so what I'll do is turn off the site coordinates, highlight my model. So I'll all load, okay, load up there, and then I hit apply. Once that's done now, that's reference to the real site. And you noticed I didn't, still didn't give it a coordinate system yet. Okay, so now I know it's in the real world, I'm gonna give it a coordinate system. So up on the quick access toolbar, usually it's just a uh, coordinate system manager, but what I usually do is I put in a change coordinate system in it. So I have uh, extra couple of features up here. So if you are wanting to put extra features, you can actually just right click on that and just customize quick access toolbar. And from there you can put in execute a few features and make your workflow uh, flow a bit faster. So I'm gonna go change coordinate system. It's gonna be coordinated and zoned. So it's gonna be Northern, Northern Ireland. It's gonna be datum grid. And in there, it's gonna be the new uh, GI Northern Ireland 2015. And there I just make it survey quality, hit finish. And you notice in TBC down here on the right now, it comes uh, coordinate system. 
like that if you actually calibrated the site I say calibrated down there as well so now we know we have a coordinate system and it's in the right part of the world we can actually have a look at that so how we look at that is through the toggle map so the toggle map has been added down here so if I actually click on toggle map just so you know is you actually have to have your trim with connect active in the background so it's usually in support options uh, external profiles so if you go into your toggle background what it opens first is it loads it checks your Trimble Connect account and it loads the imagery in the background so it's only street map but uh, it's just the outline of the roads and stuff but what you want to see is, is something really nice so you want to see the satellite imagery so to see that you have to go into projects and you go into your project name so you just click on that okay and then in the properties it'll tell you the background map okay so in there you can have visibility on or off transparency but well, it says Trimble Map. So if you go in there and go into Digital Global Imagery, it shows you satellite imagery in the background. So what you get to see here is our map. So what they have here is the old map from the old school. So this was a demolition and build job. So in here you have the old school. So here's the new school been built on it using the IFC. And you can see here all the retainer wall into the structure. So this was going to be like an artworks project here as well. They had the existing car park but they need to dig back into the existing ground. So in here, they're going to have to create data to work into that uh, background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do that straight from the model. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll just go down to my toggle map and turn that back off. And obviously, thanks to Wayne again, I can go into my CSV. And in here, he has a whole GL for the whole job, but he also has uh, data for the retaining wall. So I can bring in that data. Drop it in again. And in here, I'm just going to pick unknown again. Hit import. Mind the warnings, press OK. And there we have the data in there. So literally, it's all survey points in there. So what I'll do is I'll go in there. And you can see the feature code. So he has uh, spot levels in there, pop of banks, and all that data in there. If I go into my uh, 3D, You'll see that all the spot levels are up the further bank for the retaining wall. So what I do is create a quick surface out of that. So I go into the surface, create a surface. I just call this RT. PD we wall. And then this is going to be original color. I'll give it a green for the grass and then select I'm uh, going to select all this file. So instead of having to click all these one by one or, or go into point, uh, viewpoint, spreadsheet or anything like that, I can just go straight into my project. Uh, I click on the CSV, right click on that and select the members. Okay, and they'll already highlight for me. And then I'll hit okay. And there's my uh, surface there. And I actually seen lately there was actually a tip on uh, TBC when you actually select the surfaces the max edge brake lines are usually set it crazy big so usually you can set that down to 100 and what that does is save your finger from clicking and trimming there for the day so the handy little one's really good for roading and stuff so in yeah there, I, sorry, I always love showing that one because everybody's favorite activity is always trimming surface triangles so yeah. that's a Showing that one because everybody's favorite activity is always, always trimming surface triangles. So yeah. that's a really nice, uh, handy uh, time saver there where it'll trim some of the excess, uh, you know, some of the triangles that aren't indicative of, of the surface members on the outer uh, 
uh, portions of your surface only. It's just the outside edges. It's not going to cut anything on the on the inside of the surface. Yeah. So like Joe Thanks was saying. Thank you, That's great. Yeah, like if I had uh, if it was surveyed and I process the feature library here now and that was out of boundary, if I process that, I can trim away and it won't go over the brake line. But uh, uh, if you're well used to it, doing the roads, if you actually start doing a surface and do a corridor and then start trimming it and you go, oh, I might edit this and have a look at it, and then you'll have to go back and retrim it. So yeah, it's a really nice feature there if you do a, a brake line. Even for this example, if, if this was your surface and you want to lock in, I always go in and create a surface uh, break edge line. So you can go into surface edge break line, call it break, break line layer, same again. I can put it on a new layer, just call it surface. Close that and then pick my surface. And then there you go, there's an outline there, just there for you. So that's what Joe's getting at there, just a little loud outline in that. So it locks that in there. So if uh, triangulation outside that, I can trim it away. So what we'll do for this is I'll turn off the surface, right? And then I'll go off and show the disconnected points. So I don't want to see any of my points in my background. And what I'll do is turn off the layer as well for that. So literally, if we were doing this retaining wall here, uh, you can see that it's all stepped as it usually is to step up for elevations. But what we can do is literally draft off this uh, IFC. So usually, you do the step all the way along, but what I'll do is just do a quick line string. So I'm just going to go up into CAD, line string, I'm going to call it RT wall, layer will pop in, just hit, put it on an RT. So I'm just going to call this RT again, RT line. Oh. Give it a different color so it's easier for you to see. Okay, press OK, and in there, I'm just useful line string, so it's ready to snap, but you notice there, I can actually click off the IFC, so I can click in here, so there's my points, you see that it's in 3D, I just click up to the next one here, and just start creating this line, so just a quick little line string in there, exit out of that, so there's my line string, and then if we go into CAD, so literally I drew it this way, so I'll just do an offset, so I go to do a bit of a workspace here, so the machine's going to go in and out and dig out from the back of it. So I can go into offset, give it a name, call it OS, put it on the RT uh, line layer. Offset will say, give it three meters for the machine. And because I'm going to go to my left, because I drew this down along, that's my left. And offset vertical, I leave it at zero, hit apply. And there's my two lines there, okay? So what I'll do is create a surface out of these two. So there's one line string, another one, create a surface out of that. Call this RT wall. This is going to be a bit of a design here. Give it a light gray color. Hit OK. And there you go. It's just to show you know the trimming. So you can go in here and trim and like that. You won't trim across your, your lines if you have a line string there. OK, so that looks pretty good. To show you guys in 3D, so there it is. There, but you had extra time, you'd actually step along there, okay? So, what I want to do is I want to use this line to tie in to this surface, okay? So, you can see that I want to work in here and I want this line to tie into this original surface. For that, I'm going to use a, a surface type, okay? So, I use the IFC to create my data, and then I have my original survey data, and now I can do a quick surface type into the back of this mound so the lads actually can dig out uh, for this retaining wall. So I go into my surface tab, and then you're going into surface type, okay? So you click on surface type, give it a name, I'll just call it tie. I'm gonna put it on a layer, retain it all line, and surface to tie. So I'm gonna to tie to the retain it all wall. Reference line is gonna be this one down here. So if I just click on it, that's it there. It's going to go to my left again, and then the max base, and it's going to go one, and then my cut and fill. What do I want this to cut to? So this is going to cut down, and so going to fill up. So literally, we'd say, just say it's a load of rock, we're going to make, and we want to cut it down, sheer face down. So we go one as to one. If you don't know the percentages or anything like that, you can actually put a percentage in, 50%, whatever you want in there, or the ratio. 
or put in a slope table. So usually we say slope ratio one is to one. Fill if there was a fill, it'd be one is to run. And then the round, if this was this is severe here, so this is a tight angle corner. But I want when I'm gonna do that, I want to smooth it around instead of being very rigid. So that's round. And what I want to do is add that to my existing surface, which is the RT wall we just created. So once I do that, I hit apply, and then there's your tie. So if I actually turn off, let's say I turn it off, you can see the existing tie line here. So there's a lovely smooth tie into my existing OGL. So now lad, the lads can literally export out, let's say the RT wall, that's the TTM file. So a bit of a trimming bit to do there, but you can actually export straight away the TTM file. And no, another little uh, trick I learned during the TBC is when you actually have the tie, just say if you had the surface, and you wanted to create another edge breaker on, around here, but all you actually wanted was that line. So that little line that's actually tying along the surface. So when you select on it, it actually selects the whole surface or it actually selects the tie as one solid object. So what I usually do there is just if I want that line, I want to go straight out to CAD. So a guy, a guy can actually load it up on his logger as a DXF and let you go out to that bank and set up that line. Usually I go in and explore the line explode the tie and what that does is if I explode that what it does is it separates the tie from the line and when I close that you'll see that now I had created a third thing which is the CAD line so I can go in there and select that CAD line on its own and actually export that so if the lads need to know where the line was if they didn't like have a we say a file with the alignment along it to work out to do the battle rails or rail it up or anything like that. And they need to just where the basic cup fill is so they can put it in a peg along there as well. So usually you can use that as well. And if I want to say separately click on something else, another line here and another line there, I can create a separate surface on its own there. I can actually manipulate that line, change a lot of settings, make that run a little bit smoother or something like that. And then you can change it there and work, work your artwork reports a little bit differently, check data here and there, okay? So that's one or two little uh, features there in uh, TBC using the model. Um, you can actually go in and actually create the data from the roads and all that in there as well. If I even go in and select it, so it'll tell me it's a wall, it's a 400 reinforced concrete wall. So I click, click on that component of the model when I click on that command, it'll actually give me the name and it'll give me the layer it's on and then it'll give me the volume. So it's actually quite handy to work out quantities. So you can actually go in and say, oh, isolate the, let's say the 200, 400 RC walls and isolate them in. But what a really nice feature is because I created a line string from that, you might want to create a, let's say, load of setting out points. You want to create something from the floor and um, we can do that in TBC, which I'll show you later, but we can also create CAD data from the model. So if I go in here with it, and I click on this element here, which is the file caps. Okay, so we file in the cap. So you can also go in to select by layer. So I've done my quick acts toolbar. So if I just deselect everything and just select the file, the file caps and the files, click on that. So I know that was the file cap layer. So if I go in here, let's say if I only show actually these. So I'm gonna view only this for now. Okay, so I'm just gonna view these for now. And I'll turn off my surface as well, so nice and clean. So just say, <coughs> excuse me, we're gonna work with uh, this data there now. So I'm gonna go back into the CAD command. And this time I can create from CAD. Okay, so I pop into create from CAD. And what I wanna do is create CAD points. So what you can do is actually give a code on these and run a feature library as well if you wanted and join all them as well, or you can export them out as just a CSV. So just a little sample, what I'll do is just create CAD points. Okay, it'll ask me what I want. So I'll just click this one for now. Here's okay, subshift, click a couple of them. Maybe this one, this one, this one. Okay, and then it'll ask me what name, what points. So we just say 5,000, layer, uh, we can just hit a uh, space where I'm going to call this new layer. So I'm going to call it CAD points. Pop in there, give a lovely magenta color here. And then code, if I wanted, 
uh, I can go P, C. And sometimes in there, I, I, if it's something I know, if it's an element I know, like the retaining wall, I'll actually give it, we'll say if it's a pile cap, if it's, uh, we'll say a 900 or something like that, or a 450, I'll type it in beside it. So at least when the lads on the logger, when they actually click on the point, they'll know it's a 450. Uh, so the, it'd be like a, nearly an attribute on top of the logger as well as the point. So what I do is hit apply. And there, and then what I do is turn on all my layers. And then you will have the CAD points in there. Okay, so I'll just show the CAD points. So they're just loading all the points there. So I disconnect the points on. And if you're all getting worried there, because usually when you click and go, and then you will have the CAD points in there. Okay, so I'll just show the CAD points. So they're just loading all the points there. So I disconnect the points on. And if you're all getting worried there, because usually when you click and go, oh, it didn't happen there, uh, it's always because it showed disconnected points. So if you're wondering why I didn't click up there quick, it's because I didn't disconnect. But you can see there now, PC 450s. So in there, if I click on the point, get the properties of the point, there's my point ID. Even if you want, you can give it a description, name, change the layer. And what I can do is I can see now it's, my X, Y, and Z, so it's coordinated, it's correct. Here was the origin point, so if I go to my CAD point, that matches my origin point. Like I was saying in Tecla earlier, it was 35.725, and it matches the CAD point that was created uh, from the data in TBC, so the points matched, so I can click in there. If you wanted then in there, really easy thing is you can export straight out. Before even going through all this data, if you're happy just to go into TBC, reference the IFC, you're literally straight out the gap straight away. You can literally export straight away the IFC without having to do the data. Literally, you can go into export IFC and then work away with the IFC within TBC. So I'll go into export and just say you wanted the model on its own, you'll go into CAD. So that's where the new IFC is hanging out. So you have the usual BIOS, the DWG and the DXF, and here we have the IFC. And the IFC is my original IFC in here. And if I wanted all these certain objects from the IFC to be shown on the logger, I can select object badge of what I want. So once that's done, I can export it straight out. And what I do is I export straight out and copy it straight onto the logger, but I also put it into Trimble Connect as well also, because it gives me the ability to put that Trimble Connect on my logger. And then from there, yeah. I can check um, attributes from my logger. Sorry, Joe. Yeah, we've had um, two questions that kind of related to where, where we're at right now. Um, first, everything that uh, uh, Kevin showed regarding the importing of the IFC is yeah. uh, um, unlicensed. So you can import an IFC yeah. with the, the free unlicensed version of TBC. Then doing some of the basic CAD tools um, and uh, surface creation is in the surface modeling edition. And then if you had just wanted to, for example, uh, bring the IFC in, rotate it, geo-reference it, and then export it. This export is in field data. So, you know, uh, pretty low basic levels of, of TBC allows you to, um, to do these operations that Kevin showed. And then um, we've had a new product launch called Trimble Site Vision, which is an augmented reality um, field uh, solution that um, ties in very, very well with TBC, where you can use TBC to support your, uh, or create your, your data models that you load into Site Vision via Connect. It is at this point, and Kevin said he usually uh, exports to Connect as well. It is at this point where you could export this IFC into Connect for um, not only getting into to feel, uh, Trimble Access in the field, but also Site Vision as well. So the workflow to support IFC um, via Site Vision, doing your data prep modeling in uh, TBC is here as well. <clears throat> Just to follow on from Joe as well, the most popular actually model, like if I was doing this and doing this every day and I wanted to do a bit of CAD tools in there, process a little bit of survey, it's usually the surface, like Joe was saying, the field data, but surface modeling is probably the best one because it gives you a little bit of everything you need to do. So you can bring in your IFCs, you can do the CAD tools, all that data. And so surface modeling is uh, quite a popular one we use 
for this exact data. So you're getting in your TR reference in your IOC, you're straight out the door onto Trimble Access. And then if you want to do a little data prep, just creating surfaces, doing a bit of cut and fill, artwork reports, it's all in there as well. And you can process your feature libraries as well. And just that Joe touched on as well, um, if it's if it's okay, literally I pop in there, I click uh, the IFC, the IFC gives it a name and it'll literally export out uh, just the IFC. So like what Joe just touched on there was the site vision. So with site vision, there's two options to export out the IFC to site vision. So we've the site vision AR exporter, and there's also the RBZ file, which is the install for uh, SketchUp. If uh, time allows it at the end, I might be able to show that really quick. But probably Joe <laughs> might get worried about run out of time there. But if we do, I might pop in if that's okay. But uh, if I go into export again, if it's okay, go into construction in here. If you flip down into construction, you will have a site uh, vision AR exporter. Uh, that's an executable file that you will get with site vision. Uh, and then that'll export out the VCL file straight out of site vision. Load it up through Connect and then you're ready to rock with your site vision. Um, if that's if that's okay with you, Joe, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So if I flip back into the CAD export uh, in there, so literally all I did was select the IFC. I picked my original model, export to the IFC. Like Joe was saying there, I could go into browse my external driver, go into Trimble Connect and load the IFC. Uh, usually I have a, we say a, T7, a TSC7 or a T10, I always put Trimble Connect desktop on it. And then I can actually go into that, visualize it, touch on the data, and actually download IFC straight onto my desktop as well. So that's an option as well. Um, so you can uh, pop in there as well. So if there's um, any more questions on the TVC, Joe, or I can pop back out into the presentation if that's okay. Yeah, no, go ahead. Yeah, okay. So, but uh, anyone, I can, anyone have any questions on TVC, just let me know. You can interrupt at any time there. I can pop back into it. So I'll just go back in here. So Trimble Access uh, 2019, I'm actually using the newer edition 2019.01. And some of the features that's in Trimble Access uh, is the IFC support. And what I'll show now is literally some of the extra features in there. So the wireframe and solid models, creating uh, points from the IFC model, the new features, the uh, measure of the surface, creating points, reviewing, and the old traditional uh, Coco functions, so creating stuff from the model. And I just like shout out to Rob Cooley, he's doing a great job with Trimble Access. So I want to say it's great help there, which always Trimble Access, so he's doing a great job down there. So I just want to shout out to Rob. So what I do is give a pop into Trimble Access here. So, so for this, I'm uh, just using my emulator here. So uh, I created a project, not really fancy here. I just literally created new. South Regional College, uh, TBC Power Hour, lovely picture of the South Regional College here. So I created a new project. And what I did is create a new job. And um, my new job is South Regional College, IFC. And in there, I can go into my properties. And uh, I've not done in there, let you scale of one, uh, units as meters, and I'm not in no map attached, no feature library, nothing as yet, okay? So all I did is create a project, create a job, and let you, I'm in a blank screen. Okay, so there's two ways of getting uh, your model straight onto your logger. So obviously like that, you can uh, plug in your USB key, copy your IFC straight onto your uh, Trimble data folder, uh, or else you can actually bring them from Connect. But what you can do is once you have them on your logger, there's two ways of doing it. You can go into this new layers icon. So when you click on that, you can actually browse to your maps. So you can click in browse here. If I fly down through my data here, so down to the bottom right there, here, and then I go into my desktop. So I have a folder in there called TVC Power Hour, IFC Models, and then GeoReference, and there's my IFC export. And there it is there. So I click on that. Uh, usually with your DXF, you tick on it once to have a little look at it. You tick it on it again to make it active. And the same thing with your DXF there, you can hit the play button. And then there's all the layers and the very same layers that were in TBC. So they both match, okay? And in there, I could say, look, all I'm going to do is work with the floors there. So I want to work with them today, and I don't want, but I want to see everything else. And I want to play around with the data, okay? So I'll select that. 
okay make it active and i hit accept and then there's the same steel model okay so the same steel model from tvc so what i can do is move around there if i hold down the zoom key so zoom in there and there's my uh structures there so i can click on the ifc and that's what it looks like in uh triple access the other option is i can actually go up into the menu here go into my job See my job is there go into my properties and then i can go into active map so the usual way you can pop in there as well and it goes into active map so you've uh, both options there so this key has been added in the browse key and then you also the web map supported as well there so, so you can browse to your wherever your folders are pro, uh, browse your trimble data into your projects files uh, and then if you don't want none you can select none or you can select all okay uh, also, instead of having to tap on that, you can actually click on it once, the All button, click on it again and make it active, okay? Once you accept in there, accept again, open it up, there's the IFC again there. You can also uh, go in here and do the top view, so you can see now this was the reference. So if we didn't, uh, we got the IFC straight away and load it straight onto your logger and you're out to the field and you're heading hidden you're all geared up ready to go and you load this up and it's all lovely and straight and everything is all ready to site at least uh, you're all the way back to tbc to, to your reference so you can see in tbc it's literally a couple of minutes and you're literally back working again so you can bring it back into tbc move rotate and you're ready to rock again out so just a couple of extra features what i'm going to do is show you a couple of features in here so if i just rotate this around here now zoom in here pick something in here so in here if I actually select on something, you know it's the create points. So you can create a load of points in here by just selecting them. So if you actually review them, it'll call it IFC, and you can see now it gives you a X, Y, and Z coordinate. So that's pretty good. That means that all that thing I did in TVC, create from CAD, creating all my points, and exporting them out as a CSV and getting them to link them and unlink them, you don't need to do that. Literally, I'm going to work with this pad today. I'm going to click the points, and I'm going to stake them out okay so literally all you do is load the ifc and you're ready to go okay if you hold down on the screen again you have extra couple of lads here so you the new to toolbar so that's the to add on to your feature library so it creates lines and everything so if i just clear here for a second what i do is touch on the components and you notice that these lads are highlighted you're wondering why they're highlighting for because it's taken the surface of the ifc and what you can do with that is if you actually hold down on the screen you have the new feature here. So there's two actual new features here. So there's the center point. So what you can do is create a center point. Literally, if you had a center of a pad or center of a bolt, you needed to click on that bolt. And all we want is we don't want all the points around the bolt, the nut, the thread. All we want to do is create a middle point, the middle of that bolt to stake it out. You can actually go in there, click center point. There you go. There's a point created straight away in the middle. So that's what you'll want for the likes of the piling caps. So you'll want the center of the circle. You click on that. Same thing works for the ducting. So if you do ducting and you do the big chamber, you can go to the face of the duct, click on that, create a center point, and then you're you're winning. You're literally going out, set out, line, pick the two points, and it'll create the line from the two points, and you're off. And you can do fixed and then offset in and out, okay? So that's one option. So if I close that, um, if I hold down again, this is the new lad. This is measure to surface. So what this is, you shoot your totalization, boom, and anywhere on that surface will give you a live feed. So you can literally do your in and outs, up and down. So no matter what you select, because we all know going out in sight, you'll say, oh, I have this point here. Oh, I have this point here. But the lad will all ask you for the oddest point up in the top left corner here with a marker he had on it. And you go, oh, wait on, I, I, I let to work that out and do offsets a couple a line here maybe offset at 300 mil work it out there's none of that it's literally straight hold down on the surface key it in and you'll notice when i start playing around extra and creating a couple of points extra gives me extra commands so i'm back to my usual ads the cocos so i can go do my areas i can do my volumes and do my uh surfaces so i just do a quick surface there so if i go back down to my top view here okay and we'll go over here. So I'll do my extents here. Just on tick these lads. So if I hold down here for a second, clear selection. Right. And then what I do is I go into my layers here. 
and I should have floor, so I'll turn them all off. So all I want is maybe a floor, see what that looks like. So here's the floor here. Okay, so you could say, right, there's a floor here. We need to do something. We don't have to go back to TBC. I need to do a quick quantity on this slab. Oh, sorry, there was there. One of the colleagues pointed out to me here. So I just go into the floor here. Oh, here's my floor here. Apologies about that. So there's my uh, floor. So what I do is I literally click in here, right? So I'll have click, click, click. And click there's my floor that's what I'm, my pour is going to be today and now I have to actually work that off do a literally cut and fill on it work out a volume really quick so literally just using the IFC I'm going to hold down on it create an area now I have an area for straight away so I'm going to call it slab floor one and then what I can do is enter that, store that so that's that's stored and my four points but I really want a surface out of that and I really want to create a volume as well so I can hold down and compute volume when I compute a volume it'll ask me to create a surface so it's going to create a TTM file for me so I'm going to go floor slab one enter accept and what that does in the background there it created a TTM file so you see that there's a terrain and you know if I, I made a bit of a mistake or anything it literally the floor should be flat we all hope it's flat uh, so the level should be the same all around it. Okay, so it'll ask me a method and this method is very similar to the calculations, the artwork reports in TBC. So I, what I want to do is I want to work out it's a slab and if we check the attribute before, it was a 300 mil slab. So what I do is go into my surface area and say floor, that's my area and my depth is 0.3. Okay, so 300 mil. But I can go in there if you want to change the units, wherever you're using uh, feet or whatever. Hey, calculate, boom, there's my uh, 106.85 cubes of concrete um, straight there, straight from the IFC in Trimble Access. So there's no going back, TVC, creating a quantity and doing it. So even if the office needed the surface file and needed a report, I can actually export it straight away and even give them the TTM file straight back to the office. So once I store that, I can actually go in here uh, yeah, and go into my reports, so into my job, we'll say export, and then in there you have all your reports. If you hang down all the way down to the end, so the 29 reports, I think, in there, and then you have the rep uh, report in there. So if you click on view, if you have likes of your TC7, your T10, your T7, uh, it'll actually load up and give you the spreadsheet there and then with the quantity there for you. Okay, so that's uh, just a very small uh, sample of what you can actually do uh, with an IOC in uh, Trimble Access. So just a small uh, couple of features there just to show what you can do. There's also one other few settings in here. So you notice this lad has been changed, three couple of buttons down there. So they pan to point. So literally if you're having a fly around there and having a look at something, you can actually pan to here, pick a thing and it'll fly to the point. You can click on the point here and you can uh, uh, pan to that point. So you can click on them, pick a point even. So I can pick a list, say pan to seven, accept, and there she is there. And it'll give you the scale, whatever size you want it. So there are two added features as well. And also in the settings, um, it actually in the uh, previous versions, uh, you had to go into the layers and then into the options to go into the DXF options and all that. So they've been added in here as well. So in the settings, you've uh, mapped data controls. So in there, you have your usual explode polylines, create nodes, okay? And then at the very bottom along here, this is the ISC. So the ISC is two uh, different display options. So solid, solid and opacity. So literally it's the transparency. So just to show you guys that, I hit 50%, hit accept and accept. And now you notice the transparency has gone to 50 because sometimes when you pick a measure surface, you want to actually look through a wall, through to the next wall to see what you're setting out, but you want to know where you are in the model. You can actually have transparency to go through that data uh, and stake it out as well, okay? So if you go back into settings and go back into uh, IFC support here, the IFC, and you can go into the wireframe. And the wireframe, 
is like your outer uh, data from the IFC. It's like your, we say, for example, 3D uh, DWG or 3D DXF. So if I zoom around there, you'll see that there's all the lines data there. So you can hold down and zoom in. And like that as well, you can actually click on the line, select any of the data in there, hold down on the, the screen there. And then in, from there, you can stake out your alignment, even create a line. Um, so if you go in and stake out alignments, you can run randomly along. So you don't have to actually go in and go to a lad, hey, I have an IFC. Uh, could you do a cut and plane for me on the first floor, second floor, third floor as a CAD drawn? But if you wanted to do that, uh, you can also go into the map here and add your DXF with your IFC. And you'll notice there because I created a slab, it created me my TTM. So if I wanted to do, uh, literally do a cut and fill on my TTM, do a DTM offset, I can also go in here, stake out, uh, pick my RTK and pick DTMs. It loads my uh, RTK here, my radio. Just start my survey. It'll ask me what DTM I want. Just antenna height, I'll just put in 1.8. And it'll ask me, right, that's my designed ED, uh, DTM. So now I need to know, right, it's a 500. We, we were told it's 300 mil like we did a few minutes ago. All of a sudden, some lad rocked on. He goes, oh, would you have to change in that? We have to go a bit deeper, uh, the background or whatever. We have to go to 450. So you go, oh, right, so no bother. I have to design. I'm going to do a DTM offset 450 vertical. And you say, right, I'm going to go down. Uh, and the nice thing is it's vertical straight down. Uh, just say if you have a big weird batter like a road, and you have a batter at the side, you can do per perpendicular offsets as well. So for that one, you do a vertical offset. I want to go down and I hit start and there I'm off. Literally straight on top of that surface, it'll give me a cut uh, and give me a live feed here and give me cut and give me my offset, my difference between my offset DTM, my design level and my finish uh, DTM offset. So that's just a couple of quick little features there in Trimble Access. So if you, um, that's okay with you, Joe, I'll pop back into the presentation unless anyone had any questions on from Blackface. Um, one question, and I, I think I um, answered it correctly, the uh, IFC support as we know it here now was added in version 2018.00, which was that monumental release that was supported by the tablets. I yeah. do not believe, and Kevin, please correct me here, if you know, I do not believe that the IFC file formats and this workflow that you're showing here is supported on the old TSC threes, correct? Uh, that is correct. It has to be an operating system. So uh, it's like the old Access, which say 2017 on the old uh, TSC three or whatever it would say the Yuma two. What happened was literally you'd notice you had, didn't have 3D functions on the TSC three, but you had it on the Yuma. Hence, it was an operating system. So the IFC is only supported on like that 2018, and obviously that's supported on a TSC7, or we'll say a T10 or a T7. So it's you're looking at kind of having an operating system like a Windows 10 Pro, hence uh, it was a TSC7 uh, that it was supported on. So the the last of the TSC, to what I said, the UMAs and TSC trees, they went up, we said, to 2017, even uh, we said, uh, for example, a Kenai. They can go up to 2017, 23, but for 20 uh, uh, above that, 2018, 20, 2018, 20, and the 22 patch, and the 2019 and 20, uh, 20, 2019 01 patch, they're all with uh, TC7, with say, and T10, really. Um, uh, like product release was for T10 and TC7. Okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, thank you. There's a couple of questions coming in. Um, uh, just a clarification here, this has been asked a couple of times. Um, when we went out to support IFC, um, we, uh, we meaning the TBC team and, and Trimble Access as well, we kind of worked hand in hand with this. Um, you know, TBC and Trimble Access are not BIM software. Um, we are, uh, you know, geospatial construction survey software that, and, and with this specific workflow, we're enabling surveyors and contractors to participate in BIM workflows, you know, so being able to take structural models um, from from packages like Tecla or Revit and get them into, you know, your uh, integrate them with your geospatial data, 
Um, that was really the intention here. And I love this demo and prepping this with Kevin because it showed exactly what we were targeting, you know, taking a model that was in some, you know, 000, whatever local site coordinate system, um, and then georeferencing it to your uh, survey data, and then using the tools in TBC to complement that. And, and Kevin showed a little bit uh, of that workflow, and then getting them into Trimble Access. Um, along the way, we've got a new uh, a new field tool, you know, Site Vision, that uh, will support this as well. Um, and so, uh, just a little little bit of a forward looking statement. Um, we are by no means I can speak for Trimble Access as well. Um, done with supporting IFCs. Um, I of course can't tell you a specific time frame, but we um, have gotten a lot of nice comments and feedback here uh, from this session. And keep, keep those comments coming. Um, we are going to continue to enhance um, our support for IFCs and, and you know, interacting with them just like they're any other object, data object in TBC. And I know Trimble Access is going to do the same. So this was a really good first start. It's a complete workflow. And that uh, really was our objective for, for supporting this. So um, yeah, that's my, that's my, I'll get off my soapbox now and um, get back into the presentation. Okay, so that was the Trimble Access demo. Um, if we have time there now, but like that, I just want to reiterate the, what actually Joe actually said. So. What, what we really wanted was, there was a lot of talk, BIM talk, uh, what we want to get into BIM, and being a surveyor will say that you're used to your usual, you know, your TTMs, your GXF, you know, you're going to get a DWG, you're going to maybe get it in a local. So what I actually do even for the IRC is I actually export out the local as well. I, I actually bring it into TBC, I have a look at it, I bring it out and leave it as it is. And I also GR references. And you're wondering why would I even do that? Because What'll happen is you'll geo-reference, we'll say that one, you'll set it all out. But you will need the local as well, because you know you're going to go onto the site, you'll have grid lines. The grid lines might be local, or you're going to set it up a, a different system. So there's no harm. You can have two models, one reference, one geo-reference. So like Joe was saying there, the, what do what did I really want going out in the field? Like, literally, do I really want to go into that model and go crazy into it? All I want is I want that model and I want to be able to work from it, and I wanted to get it out into my logger. So that's what uh, I like about the workflow, is literally I can bring it into TBC, I can have a quick little look at it, I can actually move it where I want to, I can actually do data with it, do a bit of data prep, a bit of takeoff, do a bit of corridors even, and then I can literally export it straight out onto the logger. And then I, from there I can put it on my logger, I can put it on, like Joe said, side vision, and then you're ready to rock. You literally can do whatever you want out in the field and you're ready to go. Um, like that, yeah, to be a load of cool features. Hopefully, Joe, if you get a lot of emails off me, <laughs> what to put into the extra releases. I say he's well sick of me now at this stage. But uh, <laughs> it's like that, and the lad, uh, like Rob as well, they're actually doing a pretty good job. They literally got the ISC what you wanted, put it on the logger, and that's really what you want. You want to set out that ISC in the logger. And then from there, we can start uh, getting into the nitty gritty. So. For that, at least it's a complete workflow. So literally for all my uh, model, even in Revit, if you get an RVT file, uh, all I do is I open up the RVT, not in crazy, it depends if it's what version it is, if you have to upgrade it, you have to upgrade the components. All I do is literally go into export IFC and I literally go to TBC because it's nice and easy, it's quick, I know where to go. It's just the example I took was Tecla was I uh, coming from a uh, steel background, uh, come, uh, a bit more familiar with it, but I know in Tecla, if I really had to, I can actually go in and create a base point, a rotation point, and export it out. But I still bring it in to TBC, because I need to work with it, I want to do a bit of volumes, I want to do a bit of everything with it, survey it, process, and then I go into access. Uh, like uh, Joe's just questioned previously, uh, when I actually have a T10 or a TSC7, uh, it's a great thing to actually download Trimble Connect desktop on, on the controller. I think it's a great because if you're in that model and just say you click on a corner column and you really want to know about the color column, the weight, the, the attributes of, the, of that uh, certain uh, piece in the model, you can actually go on to Trimble Connect, literally have it on your desktop, open it up, tap on that, go into 3D Viewer. The model is there. You can actually tap on any of the elements and actually see that element and all the attributes on the right hand side. 
from there you can take the screenshots then and send it back to your Trimble Connect. Uh, it's literally all in the field, it's all on your TC7. There's, uh, it's just no going back. You don't have to fly back to the office, take a ride all the way, and then forget, uh, go back and go do a bit of TBC. It's all literally at your control and you're, you're ready to do it on the field. So that's what I like the most, that uh, I'm not relying on anything. I can actually have just a TC7, not else, and work from there and do everything I need to do. Uh, and then you get send it back to the field remotely. So um, if there's no other questions there, I'll hand it over to Joe. Um, if we time at the end, Joe, I don't know, do we have a bit of time, but if anyone wants to see one thing in SketchUp, um, I can pop it over. That's if Joe lets me there now, if I, I don't know if I'm running out of time or not. Yeah, I think we're, I think we're out of time. But I got a, I got a couple of minutes here left, um, and one correction. Thanks to Dan um, for pointing out the IFC um, support as we showed it here today was in Trimble Access 2018.20. We said dot zero. It's dot twenty. So thanks, Dan. Um, so we've had a, a flood of questions and things come in. We will get to them. They, they are logged, like I mentioned earlier. Um, and so hopefully we've uh, spurned some some interest here and uh, got you interested in TBC and Trimble Access um, if you're not already. So we've got a lot of resources available to you. Kevin, you can keep flipping through. I'll talk to these. Um, first off, our, our homepage is kind of our, gate, our gate, um, gateway to uh, learn a little bit more about TBC, what all we have, some testimonials, the tutorials there is. Um, to a lot of tutorials on these workflows that we have already that you know we give you a data set and let you play around with it a little bit um, and Kev is uh, are you able to share this IFC model or is that something that um, uh, customer wanted to keep? Do. I just check with the customer but I, I could I just check first yeah okay all right and we might we might be able to share an IFC file if not I've got other IFC files that we can um, share along with this recording when we make it available here in a couple of days so Good place to start, TBC webpage. Go ahead. Our YouTube channel, um, as much as you like to listen to us talk for hours and hours and hours on end, these videos on the YouTube channel are focused more on a couple of minutes each, breaking down workflows. There is IFC uh, video um, for this exact workflow in about seven, eight minutes. Um, got 270 plus videos and counting. So really tremendous resource for you. Um, to uh, to learn at your own pace. If you are, really want to listen to my lovely accent again, we have a core a group Ireland YouTube. Yeah. If you want to really listen to it again, <laughs> um, the past TBC Power Hours. Um, one of the nice things about these sessions is that they've been recorded since their um, uh, start back in uh, 2015. So we've got about 50 of these things where you know we take a workflow and we break it down for you. Um, they're available for free on demand at that URL. This presentation will also be shared, so don't worry about scribbling or copying these um, URLs down. I'll send out a PDF of the deck uh, with the recording as well. The community page, join others and, and ask questions or um, uh, get some feedback here from your peers uh, that is monitored by the uh, Trimble and the TBC team. Um, find out the latest news uh, and updates to the software as well. And we do also put a weekly tip of the week together, um, you know, little fun fact or a hidden feature there, like, you know, that space bar to create a new layer or some of the, ex I don't know if we've got it yet, but that explode um, surface that, that Kevin showed was, was really interesting as well. So little things like that to get you a little bit more knowledgeable in our software. All right, if you are interested and you do not have the latest TBC or you need a TBC, well, the download is free, uh, as well as a free 30-day demo from your local Trimble distribution partner. Um, those are all the locations for geospatial dealers only. Um, there are a similar map for the SciTech construction dealers. We are worldwide. One of the strengths of Trimble is our very strong uh, enabled distribution partner network as exemplified here by Kevin and, and Coric in the UK. Um, if you do not, do not know who your geospatial partner is, you can find them at that geospatial partner locator at that URL, or you can find it um, where to buy it at uh, trimble.com. All right, this is a very exciting time for Trimble. We've recently announced a couple of new geospatial products here this week, last week at, uh, at Energeo. 
Um, one of the very, uh, I'll say show-stealing, maybe a little biased, but maybe not, uh, show-stealing new releases was the Trimble X7. Um, it's a new laser scanner, and that the workflow um, feeds directly into TBC and or RealWorks. And so we're happy to have um, Richard Hassler, who's been playing around with this thing for a while, um, showcase the workflow uh, of the X7, data, real-world data sets, showing the perspective field software, getting it into uh, TBC, and showing some of the scanning functionality and registration functionality that we've built into TBC next month. So that's going to be a really, really nice um, introduction to the X7. You've seen a lot of, hopefully you've seen a lot of buzz about it. Um, we'll break it down, actually show you what it looks like in TBC next month. I think that's it, man. That's it, man. So we can still call it a power hour. You were worried about maybe a power two hours, but we only yeah. want about 10 minutes long. So. Yeah. If there's any customers probably on this, they're probably realizing going, that was the shortest time I've ever talked. <laughs> uh, well, so you having a four hour day. <laughs> I, um, I can't thank you enough, man. Really nice job. I'm happy to have you on and showcase, you know, your abilities. Kevin is an all star. Um, Coric is a, is an extremely strong partner. So the UK, uh, is very lucky to have the Coric there on the ground. Um, and we're happy to partner with them. So, um, that's all I have. Uh, welcome to Jeff. Uh, he'll be taking over here from the TBC side. And uh, that's all I got, guys. Any Anything else? No, just a big thank you to you guys as well for having me anyway and actually getting to play with this software TBC. So I'm one of many that actually enjoy doing it. So thanks to you actually as well for having me. Great. Well, thank you again, Kevin. We appreciate everybody listening um, and hope to hear from you soon. And we will see you next month with the Trimble X7 scanning workflows in TBC. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.